Hey everyone! Three months ago I jumped on a Samsung Galaxy S9, and I've been using it as a daily driver ever since. How did it fare? I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and this is my Samsung Galaxy S9 long-term review. So before I start, let me be clear about something. This review will be entirely based on my usage habits, so it will be subjective and your mileage may vary. So with that out of the way, let's begin. To start off, I have to admit this phone is gorgeous. Even after a few months of use, I still find it very attractive to look at. Technically, its design is almost a year and a half old, but it's still one of the prettiest glass slabs around. However, it's as slippery as it is pretty, and if you use it while you're lying on your side, it'll slide from your hand and keep falling over. By the way, I used the S9 Plus for three weeks before I switched to the S9, and I found the smaller form factor way more comfortable. It's more convenient for day-to-day -day use, and the smaller size means it's less likely to slip out of my hands or my pockets. That said, neither inspired confidence that they'd survive a drop on a hard surface, and I highly recommend getting a protective case. If you want to be even more cautious and avoid the inevitable micro-scratches, you should get a tempered glass protector. However, finding one that is durable, doesn't jump off the screen, doesn't impede touch controls, and takes the edges into account is an adventure all its own. At least the IP68 rated protection allows for peace of mind around water, and I refuse to use a phone without it again. Something I could live without is the Bixby button. If you keep it pressed for too long, even after deactivating it, Bixby will still drop in and say hi. The fingerprint reader isn't the fastest, but I've had no problems with it, and it's more reliable than using the face and iris unlock options. Palm rejection works fine most of the time, but it's not perfect, and on some occasions I do miss having a screen with a flat display. The screen is amazing, but I usually turn off the QHD mode in order to save on battery. Honestly, after the first minute, I stop seeing any difference, and when watching Netflix, I can easily bump up the resolution. More importantly, the colors are vibrant and the auto brightness works really well, so things always look nice. I haven't had a problem with sunlight legibility either. Friends have told me that the sound quality during a call is worse than from previous phones I've used, namely the Mate 10 Pro and the OnePlus 5. The S9 tends to sound better when I call someone over 4G, but using it as a regular phone means the sound quality will take a hit. However, all of this might be due to the unit itself. If I had to give one reason I really wouldn't want to give up the S9, it's the speakers. They're really loud, the sound is rich, and they even have some bass. They're good enough that I don't need to hunt for a Bluetooth speaker, and they're routinely a lifesaver at get-togethers. For a tech YouTuber, I may be behind the times, but I still use my headphone jack on a daily basis. Sound through headphones isn't quite as good as an LG phone, but it's better than 95% of the phones out there. However, whether you use Bluetooth or not, keep the Dolby Atmos setting turned on. The difference in sound quality is like eating a raisin cookie and a cheesecake that was just freshly taken out of the fridge. That's not a fresh cheesecake though. Whatever, an amazing cheesecake! The real conundrum is that the S9's battery seems to last longer than the S9 Plus with my usage habits. Generally, in between YouTube videos, vibro calls, web browsing, and a few puzzle games, it usually lasts me a full day. With both phones, the power saver was pretty much permanently turned on, and the always-on display was turned off. Samsung seriously needs to implement a faster charging. However, using the charger included in the box is miles better than using a generic one, because then the charging speeds become painfully slow. As far as the RAM and chipset are concerned, I haven't experienced any lag. On occasion, I've had up to 30 apps open, and I've only noticed because the phone started getting warm. A lot of people like to complain about Samsung software, but honestly, I found it easy to customize for my needs. I didn't even have to resort to a third-party launcher, and when I decided to try one out just for kicks, it worked glitch-free. Unfortunately, I cannot say my experience has been entirely free of the occasional glitch. After the last update, they've become more common, and I'm hoping Samsung fixes the issue soon. On this unit, I have 64GB of storage. After a trip where I took around 30 videos a day, I got a storage close to full message, but in day-to-day -day life, it's plenty. On that same trip, I visited the aquarium with a friend who owns the S8, and we got to compare how much the cameras really differ. Usually, in auto mode, there's not much of a difference between the two cameras. The colors are better on the S9, and there's slightly better dynamic range. Samsung software tends to slightly overexpose images and videos at the cost of detail, especially in low light. By using Pro Mode, you can adjust for that and get some really good footage that's better for color grading. While we're on the topic, Pro Mode is also really easy to find and use even while you're shooting, so you can use it even if you're pressed for time. However, before shooting everything that way, you should know that it's missing HDR. 
There have been only five occasions where I regretted not having the telephoto lens of the S9 Plus. And honestly, I would prefer to get a cheaper lens from Amazon or invest in a good lens kit for moment. Would I recommend this phone? Yes. Is it perfect? No. Samsung really needs to fix their most recent update that caused all those glitches with Spotify and closing the home screen and other things like this, because this might seriously impact the longevity of the phone software-wise. Other than this, I think the phone is aging well. Despite all the phones that have come through the office over the past couple of months, even the OnePlus 6, I haven't felt the urge to jump ship. Now, this might change with the upcoming Pixel 3 and its camera, but that remains to be seen. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get our latest tech reviews as soon as they're out. See you next time.